Guys, let's go over a couple tips to get your pork butt as amazing as it can be when you're doing low and slow. So let's talk about what we're looking for when we're buying a pork butt. First off, in comparison to like, let's say brisket, which you're gonna cook low and slow and barbecue out, um, the pork has more fat. So the USDA choice versus the prime might not have as much of an impact as let's say a brisket, because even in the choice, you're still gonna have all that extra fat. And that extra fat, that collagen, the intermuscular sinew that's breaking down when you're low and slowing it is going to keep this moist over time, whether it's choice or whether it's prime. So for me, that doesn't matter as much. Grab yourself a pork butt, open it up, let's get to smoking. Now that we have it unwrapped and out, we can see it a little bit better. First thing I'm gonna do is pat it dry. As I'm patting it dry, I'm using this time to kind of explore this cut of meat to see where I might have to trim it or where the packaging had maybe broken the meat or, or torn it up a little bit in the process of getting it packaged. So this one, for example, I just noticed right in this bottom area, there's this little flap that was broken out and I know if I leave that, it's not gonna cook evenly. It's not gonna provide anything. So I'm just gonna trim that up. Just kind of nice and even. I'm trying to keep nice right angles across the butt. This looks like it was already trimmed really well in packaging. I don't have to do anything to this. Sometimes the fat caps are so thick. This one, totally fine, nice and rounded. All the fat in here, all of the collagen is gonna break down as it smokes. And I'll address that later so we can actually show you when it's happening, what it looks like. But for now, all I'm gonna do is just score this and get to seasoning. The reason why we're gonna score this is just to allow the seasoning to penetrate a little bit more and to help with surface area for the heat and the smoke inside the smoker which is gonna allow it to break down a little bit easier. And I'm not pushing, I'm just dragging my knife across the top and letting it just do its thing. If your knife isn't that sharp, you might have to find yourself pushing a little bit more. Normally, also, I wouldn't score into the meat like this. You don't have to. But with the consistency of this one having a big ball spot like me, I need to make sure that I'm scoring it all the way across. So as far as binders go, you can use mustard, you can use oil, something different. All that's doing is just helping your seasoning and rub stick to it a little bit better. As far as seasoning goes, use whatever you prefer. With this, it's more like a Southern style Carolina rub. Everything is already mixed together in a bowl and I threw it in here and I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top because I want the sweetness from this with a good amount of sugar to start binding with the, the fats when they start breaking down and I feel like that's gonna make a really good crust. Um, but what you could do, a good tip, is just to season it evenly all the way across and then come back with your rub. That way you know for sure it has the amount of salt it needs. We're gonna start seasoning from the bottom. That way when I flip it over, I don't have to season the bottom again. Just liberally season, pat in, liberally season, pat in, season the sides. You can't have too much when you're seasoning. What you're doing is you're just seasoning the outside surface area. You're not seasoning the inside of it. So because of that, having extra on the outside, a chance for that bark to cure up and, and be really tasty, once you mix it all in, you might even have to come back and re-season it again because then you have the whole inside that hasn't been seasoned with that rub. Also, if you were to let it sit here for a little bit and kind of dry brine, you're gonna allow a little bit more flavor to penetrate. I feel like it's better to wet brine a larger cut of meat like this overnight or for a couple days than to dry brine it because when you dry brine it, it's not penetrating as deep as if you were to say dry brine a steak or some pork chops or a chicken breast, something like that. It's not bad. Sweet, salty, rounded, herbaceous. <coughs> it's more tingly than hot. <laughs> We're gonna cook this at 250. That's another tip. I don't roll 225 in the pork because I wanna make sure the temperature is high enough to render out that fat in a timely manner. And I wanna render out that fat while it's smoking, not while it's wrapped. That being said, the grill's at 250. I have wood, we're gonna cook with some pecan wood inside the grill, so let's throw it on and we'll talk about the different flavors we're gonna have. I wanna make sure when it lays out, there's little cracklings open, that way the smoke starts penetrating, it's gonna allow the fat to render a little bit better, and you wanna make sure that the fat is fat side up. 
I worry if it's on the bottom shelf, it might be a little bit too close to the fire pot. Um, obviously it's a convection, everything's moving around, but I feel in this situation on a pellet smoker, if it's on the top shelf, that's gonna be perfect. With the added wood box and the pecan wood, you're gonna get way more wood flavor in it. And with the new down and out system, it's really gonna rotate in there, so I'm not worried about it not getting enough smoke either. I really love the new Woodwind Pro because it allows you to have that ownership over the smoke in your barbecue that the old ones only gave you in pellets or seasonings or whatever you added to the meat. In this one, I know that I can sit here and add pecan wood as often as I want to get it smoking as much as I want to make sure that it comes out with that bark and that flavor consistent of real barbecue. Hey guys, it's been like three hours now. You can see this amazing blue smoke rolling on the grill. Um, we haven't checked it yet. We've only been like keeping the wood flowing in the smoke box to keep that smoke going. We're gonna open it up and take a peek and see what it's starting to look like. Oh, there you go. All right, so what we're experiencing here is the rendering of the fat. It's starting to crackle down. You can see the juice is dripping. But if you look at the fat, see how it springs back like that? When it's still springing back like that, the fat is still not fully rendered. That collagen isn't broken down yet. And so we have to keep it going. In an effort to keep it moist while it's still smoking, while that fat's still rendering down because it's not ready to be wrapped yet, we have 50-50 apple cider vinegar and apple juice. And we're just gonna spray the outside all the way around. Make sure you get the back, this side too. And that's gonna keep it moist. It's gonna add a little bit of flavor, but not much. And we're not gonna spray the top. It's gonna to cool off that fat and keep that process going longer and longer. We don't want that. We want that fat to break down now. So we're just gonna spray it like that about every hour when we come out to check the wood and keep going until this fat doesn't push back anymore. Our finger's gonna press right through it. All of that collagen is gonna be broken down. That's what we're looking for. Guys, we just reached 161 degrees. That's my car that's my cue to come back and double check and see if we're ready to wrap yet so still smoky blue smoke you can see that bark it's starting to really caramelize the sugars in that rub are doing the job all that fat is working we still have some bounce back so we're not really there yet we can tell that the bark isn't fully set so on this pork butt specifically we're going to give it a little bit longer I like to double check between 160 and 180. That's usually a good cue. Somewhere between then, there's usually a bark that sets, and when that bark sets, we're gonna wrap it. Guys, check it out. We're at 171 degrees. Look at that bark. It's starting to look really amazing. This is everything I want. It is not fully rendered yet, but it is not giving me the resistance it did before. Well, it means that it's not obviously ready. It's not done. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it. It's at a good point where I feel like the bark is kind of set. We're gonna take it off, we're gonna wrap it. I'm gonna put it in a pan, I'll show you guys. Check this out. You can tell where the scores are. The fat's starting to split completely open. The bark is completely set, crusty. It has all of the color that I want it to have. The smell is absolutely amazing. But you can see like it's still pushing back. In some areas, not as much. So we're just gonna wrap it. When we wrap it, we're gonna throw it back in the smoker. You don't necessarily have to. Once you wrap it, you could finish it off in the oven. The smoke process is kind of done at this point. We're just taking it to be shreddable. A little bit of tin foil. What I'm gonna do is spray the outside edge just a little bit more, just to help have some of that moisture in there. We're gonna wrap it. Wrap it, throw it back in. And that's totally fine. We're gonna take it to 200, 205, and we're gonna test it for probe tender. Car! What that means is we're gonna slide a thermometer in it. If that thermometer can move around, pass through the meat without any resistance, that means it's done, as done as we're gonna want it to be. We're gonna take it out, throw it in a cooler, let it rest for three hours won't open it, the probe goes through the tin foil, and we'll come back and check it out after it's done resting. This has been resting inside the cooler for a few hours now, I think three hours to be exact. I like to rest it a really long time. 
Um, the cooler keeps the temperature absolutely perfect still, and it's gonna allow it to um, sit in those juices and reabsorb. That's another reason why I love resting it inside of a tin container like this. You can see all the juices in the bottom. And then when we go to shred it, you're gonna reabsorb all those juices. They're not wasted. If you can push and it gives, see how my finger just kind of makes an indent in that? It's not springing back. It's just pushing down into it. That's how you know it's rendered out properly. If it's still springing back, it hasn't rendered fully. The collagen hasn't broken down fully. The protein hasn't broken down. Just like that, the bone slides out nice and clean. So we know it's rendered down right. You can see the pink from the smoke in there. Look at that. That deep bark smoke penetration. Look at that. Let's give it a taste test. Let's do it. Mmm. That is so good. Mmm. Give me some of that. Guys, if you are digging our videos, make sure you're liking and subscribing. If you want to see more barbecue and more how-tos with the new Woodwind Pro, make sure you follow. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Get that seasoning. Oink, oink. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so <ridiculous. laughs>